Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program, Islam Explained. We are joined by our theologian, Omar. Omar, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Esel. How are you? Good, thank you, Omar. Omar, one of our viewers have, uh, has posted a question, and uh, he wants to know if there is an evidence for the authenticity of the Qur'an. Uh, yes, interesting question, and people uh, quite often ask this question, Esel. Uh, but I think before providing any evidence, we should establish that uh, from an Islamic creedal perspective, Quran is Kalamullah, which means the word of Allah. And it's the eternal word of Allah because it originates from uh, Sifatullah, uh, one of the attributes of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Kalam. So as Muslims, we believe that it's eternal and infinite. It is the word of Allah and it is revelation. And in relation to evidences or proofs, uh, we have plenty of them. Uh, like uh, if, if you were to ask me about evidences, the first thing that I would probably suggest is Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon uh, himself. Uh, he is the biggest uh, evidence for the authenticity of the Quran. Because uh, think about it this way, Waisal. Uh, we have a man who had never lied in his life including when he was a child. This is very interesting. And, and both friend and foe, which means, uh, you know, the, his friends, his close ones, relative, and including his enemies as well, they all agreed that Muhammad was a trustworthy ma man. He had never lied in his life. In fact, they gave him the title of Muhammadul Amin. That's what, now, trustworthy one. Trustworthy one. So he was unlettered, we know this. He didn't know how to write or read. And all of Mecca knew this as well. He had no formal education. So he could not have learned knowledge from anyone. Uh, and, and moreover, uh, his father died uh, when he was still in his mother's womb. Mm. And, and, and his mother died when he was only six. His mm. grandfather had to raise him, then his uncle, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how could, this, is, this would be illogical. How could a man never lied in his life, you know, suddenly at the age of 40 begins to lie. Is this possible? And in particular about God. Uh, and, and nobody accused, or, or, or accused him of this anyway, not even his enemies. They never accused him of lying. Even mm. those who did not accept it, uh, his faith, they never accused him of lying. And, and when you look at Prophet Muhammad Alaihi life, we see that he's a symbol of truthfulness you know yeah. he never even exaggerated in his life so uh, that's one side of prophet muhammad the other perspective uh, is this uh, when you look at the quran itself uh, and and the hadith what we call hadith uh, they are the sayings of prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him they are completely different Moreover, in literature, in eloquence, in, 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 in every aspect, they are completely different. different. And, and, and on top of that, Prophet Muhammad, wasalam, as we said, he didn't know how to read and write. Mm. And interestingly, the Quran wasn't a, a book that was written you know, within three months or six months or anything like that. All the revelation came down within 23 years' time. You know, no author can write a book. 23 years time bit by bit and not in the same order this is very interesting That's so, right. so prophet muhammad wasalam, himself is the biggest evidence i can say yeah. okay no, thank you that's that's very good um what about the literal composition the literal composition and the eloquence of the quran uh is this an evidence as well Omar? Uh, i definitely think this is one of the biggest evidences as well although some people might think you know how how is it a literal you know composition can be evidence <laughs> But when we look at the Quran, uh, the language of the Quran is am amazingly eloquent. In particular, uh, at the time of the Prophet's era, Arabs uh, were very advanced in literature. In fact, they had this poetry. Sometimes it, it could even cause wars between tribes. They were that powerful in poetry. However, when Prophet Muhammad wasalam, began to convey the Quran, including the most famous poets, they said, this cannot be a poetry. This is not something normal liter literature. It is not, this is not man produced. This is something of a divine source. It's very interesting. And also in the Quran, 
you know, if someone like the Orientalists, they claim, you know, they said Prophet Muhammad may be wrote the Quran himself. Mm. Now, this is interesting. How could an author write a book and within the book threaten himself? Is this logical? Uh, for example, there's a verse in the Quran says, and if Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, had fabricated against us some of the sayings in the Quran, we would certainly have seized him with the right hand, by the right hand, then we would most certainly have cut off his iota. This wow. is very interesting. So the Quran yeah. is threatening, cautioning the Prophet himself. That's very interesting. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, when, we'll, when we look at the eloquence of the Quran, as you ask, uh, the way that the Quran tells the stories, you know, historical stories and various other things, uh, when you listen to it, it, it is actually the sound of the Quran tells the story itself. Mm. You can easily, you know, understand what the verse is talking about, even if you don't speak Arabic. To cite some examples, very brief examples, sure. in, in, in Surah Nas, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is all about the whispers of the shaitan, whispers of the evil people. It's about yes. whispers. But when you listen to it, for example, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ It's all pss, 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 pss. You can hear all the whispers, you know. <laughs> That's the, right. Yeah, in the literature, how eloquent it, it is. And also with, uh, you know, tabbat. It's very interesting too. And as mm. you know, we, in, in Surah Tabbat, uh, it mentions Abu Lahab's wife stacking up uh, uh, timber, yeah? Fire. Yes, that's correct. Yes. And, and when you listen to the surah, surah, it's very interesting. You know, it's like you're putting wood on top of each other. That, yeah. That's the eloquence of the Quran. Maybe one last example is uh, when the, uh, the brothers of Yusuf, salam, Prophet Joseph, when they threw him into a well to get rid of him, the Quran says, very interesting again, it sounds like something falling into water. Yeah, it? very that's interesting. Right. So the eloquence, the, the literal or literal composition of the Quran is quite unique. There is nothing like onto it, very when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Omar, thank you. Um, I just want to ask another question. The information that's contained in the Quran, um, would this also be an evidence for its authenticity? I mean, there are some things. Uh, that may have not have been discovered uh, when it first originally was revealed 1,400 years ago or more than mm. that period. Um, and only today they're discovering certain things. I mean, we use this as an evidence. Actually, you, you, actually you made a very good point there, Waisel, because the information that uh, the Quran provides could not have been known at the time of the Prophet. In fact, no man that existed, no woman that existed in this time could have known this, even if they were very advanced in knowledge as well. Because the reason being, there are many verses in the Quran, like you said, uh, that we have just discovered recently. Uh, I can give you a few examples, not to be too long. Yeah, just like, a few uh, examples, that'd be good. Yeah. Like uh, in Surah Anbiya, there is a verse, do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together before we clove them asunder? This is very interesting because at the first instance of the Big Bang, everything were joined together. We know this by science these days, including, this is very interesting, including the three fundamental forces and gravity emerge later on. This is very interesting. There are four fundamental forces, as you know, and we call this uh, the grand unified theory and it was discovered not long time ago and the Quran already mentioned this with a verse and clearly you don't need to really translate it and then there is another verse which I find more interesting because it, 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 it's the perspective of astrophysics you know astronomy and it says and it is we who built who built the universe with power and verily it is it is we who are steadily expanding it mm. and this is very interesting mm. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we are the one who created the universe but we are expanding it not expanded it expanding its present tense this is very interesting now so we say that the universe is expanding exactly but when did we notice this in uh, during the, 
uh, during 1925s. It's a lot okay. longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but the Quran mentions this 1400 years ago. It's amazing. And I think there's the, another one as well. The formation of a, a baby in the mother's womb. Yeah, there's a number of them, but this particular verse in regards to the expansion of the universe, as you know, uh, a man by the name of Edwin Hubble, very famous astronomer, during the 20s, he wrote a paper on this because when he was observing the universe, he realized that the galaxies were constantly moving away from each other. And mm. then he wrote the paper on this and he said, look, the universe is expanding according to my calculations. It's interesting. And today, because the way the galaxies were, you know, moving away from each other, uh, they called it, you know, it, it was their speeds or velocities were proportional to their distances. So the further away, the faster they were moving. This mm. was an indication that the universe was expanding and expanding quite fast as well. Yeah. So we have established this and all, all the astronomy uh, community and astrophysics community accepts this today. But the Quran had already mentioned that. Imagine at the time That's right. of Prophet Muhammad That's right. And no human being could have known that as well. It was impossible. And this is amazing. And these are just two scientific examples. There just another examples. example, if you could give us, Omar. Like the one you gave, for example, just before. And that's a perfect one as well. Uh, uh, about the development of the fetus in the mother's womb. And, and, and the Quran describes it stage by stage, you know, yeah. uh, from, from when the sperm enters the ovum, you know, how they multiply, how it hangs on to the wall of the, the, the womb, all the development, how it turns to a blood cloth and then to, to, to a piece of, you know, meat, it seems like tube, you know. The Quran gives the exact description of what we see today in the development of fetus. And this was impossible to be known those days. That's right. That's right. So in a way, from a scientific perspective, we see many verses in the Quran as well. And there are also things that the Quran informed about future. And, and some of them have already occurred exactly the way the Quran says, says it. And others will occur too, as we can see. Would you but, say we still have uh, things to uh, figure out scientifically uh, what I mentioned in the Quran that we haven't probably discovered like, yet? I definitely think so, I said. There, there must be many things that in the Quran we still, we are yet to, you know, discover in, a, in, a, in the scientific platform. I have yeah, no doubt you, about Omar. that, yeah. yeah. Omar, I just want to ask you one last question just before we go. Um, now, how was the Quran preserved? Do we still have the original copy? I think this is the most important thing about the Quran as well, the way that it was preserved. In fact, we still have two of the oldest copies from the seventh century. This is interesting. Mm. And, and one of them is in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Wow. And the other one is in, in Topkapi Museum in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. they, were two, they are the two copies from the Osman era, the third caliph. It, uh, it, what he done is he, he generated eight copies of the Quran and then distributed to various locations where the Muslim civilizations were flourishing. And two of these copies we still have. Wow. And interestingly, uh, the Qur uh, there are even parchments that were written, you know, on animal skids, on parchments and various other objects at the Prophet's time, alayhi salatu wasalam, we still have them too, the, the, the original copies. And this is interesting. As the Quran was revealed over 23 years, worse by worse, sometime chapter by chapter, the companions of the Prophet wasalam, would memorize them uh, on, and, and then an official scribe uh, by the name of uh, Zaid bin Sabit who would write them down. And each year there would be a muqabele with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to make sure that everything was memorized and re recorded accurately. And as you know, even at the time of Prophet Muhammad wasalam, hundreds of people who had already memorized the Quran. Today, we have thousands of them. Imagine that 600 page book in Arabic. There are many people who have memorized it completely in the world today now, even people who do not even speak Arabic. And that's the miracle of the Quran. Yeah, I'd say, I was just about to say that as well. That's a miracle within itself, just being itself, able to memorize something that's not in your own language. Yes. Let me tell you one interesting thing. Some years ago, I met a person. I met a person who had a son. He was four-year-old. 
now a four-year-old boy still goes to kindergarten, yeah? That's right. They can barely talk or they just yeah, start to talk. They, they, they don't even learn the alphabet yet. Mm. He memorized the entire Quran. Wow. A sure. four-year-old uh, kid. And, and, and this, this is clear evidence that how the Quran was preserved. And, and to those who don't know, at the time of the Prophet, it was written down. Yeah. And, and the Quran we have now all over the world are, uh, is same letter for letter. Yeah, there so no whether it's from Australia, copies. America, Turkey, or Arabia, all copies of the yes, right. same. So, so there, are, there are ample evidence for the authenticity of the Quran. Yes. Okay, you basically answered all the questions I had for you, so I do appreciate that. Jazakallah. Thank you for the invitation, Rayshad. No Thank worries you. at all. And we'll see you next time on Islam Explained. And I'd like to thank our viewers as well for joining in, and we'll see you next time.